Good morning and welcome to our online worship for Sunday the 10th of October. My name is Richard Trithui, I'm the Rector. Uh, I'm going to be kind of holding this service together, I'll put it that way. Uh, and it's my joy to welcome you to take part in this online service. Um, many of you, I, I know as members of St Peter's, are now able to attend the on-site services. Uh, many are not. Uh, and for whatever reason, uh, we hope that this is an opportunity to, to praise God, to pray and to know that you are still connected uh, with the church of which you are a member. Uh, many of you perhaps have got no connection with St Peter's and have just come across this as you've been on Facebook and you too are more than welcome. And if you want to stay with us and take this opportunity to see what worshipping Jesus is like, what life could be like if you encounter God, in Jesus Christ his Son, then you are most welcome to do so too. Everything that you need will be on the screen. This week we're having a particular focus, a particular focus on something which is often talked about in church circles, uh, but perhaps isn't fully understood. This word safeguarding, uh, about taking care of one another. And we're going to have a chance to reflect on that, uh, to pray for those who are involved in that work, but recognise that actually this is something that everybody involved with the church needs to be part of. And that starts and has started with God, who has come to keep us safe, to take care of us, to rescue us from the danger that we face. And so let's pray as we begin. Loving God, we have come to worship you. Help us to pray to you in faith, to sing your praise with gratitude, and to listen to your word with eagerness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. So let's sing with gratitude forever. God is faithful. ordained 20 years ago 
Safeguarding was a word which you just never heard in the life of the church. But over the last 20 years, it has become increasingly and distressingly apparent that we do need to know it and we need to do it well. Just in case you're, you're wondering, what, what do I mean when we're talking about safeguarding? Uh, this little video will help. We believe that church should be a place where every child and adult can feel and be safe. But this doesn't happen by accident. That's why we have a safeguarding coordinator who helps us to do the things we need to do to keep children and adults safe. This includes recruiting our workers safely, reviewing and keeping our safeguarding policy up to date, and responding to any concerns. We regularly train our staff and volunteers in working safely. They are all accountable to each other and their leaders. Our leadership team has overall responsibility for making this happen. But we can't do this on our own. We need your help too. Please respect boundaries. If you're not an approved youth or children's worker, don't wonder where their activities are taking place. Please support our safeguarding coordinator. It's their job to help ensure everyone is safe. And it's often a challenging task. If you see or hear anything that makes you feel uncomfortable, please report your concerns, even if they seem small. Safer places are not difficult to create. If we all play our part, Let's make this place safer for everyone. Together. As I said, it's become increasingly apparent over the last 20 years that not doing safeguarding well has caused great pain to people. It has damaged and hurt people. It's only in the last couple of weeks that a report has been published about the French church and the numbers of cases that there has been, the number of perpetrators of abuse who have hidden within that institution. And we can't point fingers at that country or that denomination uh, because the reality is in the Anglican Church, we too have seen people uh, abuse, misuse, hurt others. And so one of the things that I have to do as a member of clergy, and I think all of us do as a church, is recognise our fault, recognise where we've got it wrong, to recognise where we've messed up, and be brave enough to say we want to do it differently in the future. And we come to God to ask for forgiveness and to ask for the strength to do that. Because Jesus said, before you offer your gift, before you offer your worship, 
go and be reconciled, make things right. As sisters and brothers in God's family, therefore we are here to ask our Father for forgiveness. And so we say together, Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So may Almighty God, who sent his Son into the world to save sinners, bring us his pardon and his peace, now and forever. Amen. And knowing God's forgiveness, as well as his power to lead life differently, to do things in a new way, and let's sing these songs, a song which speaks of who we are in Christ, whether we've been hurt, God is able to restore and to draw us to himself. So let's say. Who am I that the highest king would welcome me? I was lost, but he brought me in, oh, his love. slave to sin, Jesus died for me. Yes, he died for me. Who the sun sets free, who is free indeed. I'm a child
our reading is taken from Mark chapter 9. The disciples and Jesus came to Capernaum. When Jesus was in the house, he asked them, What were you arguing about on the way? But they kept quiet because on the road they had argued about who was the greatest. Sitting down, Jesus called the twelve and said, Anyone who wants to be first must be the very last and the servant of all. He took a little child whom he placed among them. Taking the child in his arms, he said to them, Whoever welcomes one of these little children in my name welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me does not welcome me, but the one who sent me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now to help us reflect more on the place and importance of safeguarding, at the Church of England's lead bishop on the subject, Jonathan Gibb. Hello. It's very good to be able to share in your worship today. My name is Jonathan Gibbs. I am the Bishop of Huddersfield and the Church of England's lead bishop for safeguarding. I'm very grateful to 318 for inviting me to be part of Safeguarding Sunday and to contribute this address to the range of resources they are making available to churches up and down the country. And it is with the theme of gratitude that I want to begin. First and foremost, to all of you, to the countless people in churches across the UK who are doing so much to make our communities safe and healthy places where children and adults alike can discover the love of God in Christ and be enabled to enjoy the fullness of life that Jesus intends for us all. I recognise that our churches of whatever denomination have been on a huge journey regarding safeguarding in recent years. And that has involved countless people taking on new responsibilities and learning new ways of doing things in order to promote better safeguarding in the life of the church. And that has involved a huge amount of work, of time and of effort. So thank you so much for all that you have done and are doing as part of that journey. At the same time, I also want to acknowledge that we have not always got things right. Most importantly, we know that we have too often failed victims of abuse, either by failing to prevent harm to them in the first place or failing to hear their cries when they have tried to speak up about what has happened. We have a long way to go in putting things right. And we also owe a huge debt of gratitude to those victims and survivors who have spoken out and sought to hold the church to account. Their stories can make for uncomfortable listening, but we need to hear what they are saying and to go on learning from it. I am conscious too that there are a good many people who are still wondering what safeguarding is really all about and why it has come to be such a prominent issue in the life of our churches. Well, the name 31.8 refers to a verse in the book of Proverbs which reads, Speak up for those who cannot speak for themselves. And this is at the heart of what safeguarding is about. Looking out for the needs of the vulnerable and ensuring that their needs are met with love and compassion. It is about protecting vulnerable people and promoting healing and justice for those who have been harmed. As I hope we are learning across our churches, safeguarding is about so much more than rules and regulations, about checks and procedures, vitally important those these, though these things are. Safeguarding is about promoting fullness of life for all people just one part of which is to do with preventing harm. I believe we need to see safeguarding as part of something much bigger, part of the whole work of the gospel, which is about enabling people to experience the fullness of life that God desires for us all. 
Our churches are meant to be places where people can discover the joy of living in harmony with God, with our fellow human beings and with the whole of creation. In this sense, safeguarding is related to many of the challenges we are facing in today's world, to issues of racial justice, of prejudice, of deprivation and inequality, and to the climate emergency that threatens the very fabric of life on earth. As Christians, we should have a vision, a big vision, of God's purpose for our lives, going back to the story of creation where human beings were not only given the fruits of the earth to enjoy, but were commanded to tend the earth and to take care of it. God created us to fill the earth and to act as responsible stewards of its riches. And God calls us to care for one another as those are made who are made in his image. Jesus reinforced that message time and again in his teaching, reminding us to love our neighbours as ourselves and challenging us even to love our enemies. And most pointedly of all, Jesus placed children at the heart of the kingdom of God and issued dire warnings to anyone who caused them to stumble or fall. So what might this mean for us and for the life of our churches? Well, I think it takes us back to the start of Jesus' public ministry and his reading from the book of Isaiah in the synagogue, the Nazareth Manifesto, as it has been called. Luke chapter 4 verse 18 reads as follows. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight to the blind, to release the oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour. Those words surely have an even bigger resonance for all of us after the experience of the last 18 months of the coronavirus crisis and the successive lockdowns. Jesus Christ is in the business of releasing people from captivity and more than that of bringing healing and the promise of God's favour and blessing to those who have been oppressed. And that is precisely what the Church of Jesus Christ should be about too. We need to recover and rekindle that sense of vocation, to be those who bring God's healing and liberation to the world around us, enabling people to experience God's fullness of life in harmony with God, with one another and with creation. We are called to be a people who weep with those who weep, including those who have been affected by abuse in whatever way. And we are called to be those who rejoice with those who rejoice, most of all as people begin to discover the healing love of God in Christ. Our churches should be places of sanctuary, open to all who seek solace and peace, and also places that bring people together to work for the good of all and for the transformation of the world, for the sake of the poor, the vulnerable and the oppressed, whether as a result of racial injustice, abuse, prejudice, deprivation or the effects of climate change. There have been wonderful examples of churches doing just this through the coronavirus crisis, with the burgeoning of new food banks and other projects. But I sometimes feel that as we come out of the worst of the crisis, the experience has left many of us and our churches feeling fearful. The danger is, therefore, that we might lose confidence at this crucial moment and retreat inwards once more. Now is not the time to look inwards. Now is the time to look up and to look out, 
time for our churches to play their part as communities of hope and love in the midst of an anxious world. Safeguarding is part of that work by our being communities of hope and love for the sake of children and the vulnerable, but also for the sake of everyone, including the generations that will come after us. We need to look up to Jesus Christ, to be filled with the hope that is ours in him, and to heed afresh the great manifesto that he proclaimed at Nazareth. And we need to look out to the world he came to save, and to the countless people, children and adults alike, who need to hear the good news of Christ and to experience his compassion and healing for themselves. Safeguarding is at the heart of the gospel. It is about enabling people to experience the fullness of life that Jesus came to bring. Thank you for all that you and your churches are doing. And may God bless you richly as you share in Jesus' work of bringing freedom, healing and peace to the world around you. Amen. this place be one of nurture where we all may come to know how your endless love sustains us as we live and move and grow may we work to build your kingdom full of truth and light and grace living life in all its fullness held in one divine embrace from our negligence and failures you have called us to repent drawing energy for action from the of the best as a secret her tongue hidden may at last be brought to light may the truth unlock the freedom that is every person's right for you hold the broken hearted till they learn to live again and your justice stands like mountains while your mercy falls like rain when the smallest child is valued and the strong in power we when each human life is hallowed and the unheard voices speak. So with humble thanks we praise you and we make to you in prayer all the people you are calling to this ministry of care. Give us wisdom, grace and courage, holding fast to all that's good, seeing Christ as one another. We will love and serve our Lord. prayers around the ongoing work of safeguarding that are led by a variety of people, some of whom you'll see, some of whom you'll hear. 
gentle and gracious God, we thank you for situations you create where people can flourish and the space you make where we can heal each other. We humbly praise you that you have so wonderfully created us and made a place for each one of us. We treasure before you the gift of healing, of new life and of a kingdom in which the weak are strong and the strong are weak. You make all things new, meet us in our brokenness and begin again with us today through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time in your presence. We thank you for who you are and that you are a good, good father to all of your children. Father, today we pray for safeguarding workers and those working to make our churches safer places for children, young people and adults at risk. We pray that you would bless them with wisdom, with strength, with understanding and courage. Father, we pray that you would give them the tools, the necessary tools that they need to continue to do this work that you have called them to. I pray for their families, Lord, that you would bless their families and bless their support networks. We ask, God, that you would bring able people alongside them to make their tasks more manageable. And Lord, we pray that as they carry out these tasks, that you would protect them guide them. We ask that you would give them peace in their hearts and in their minds. And as uh, our workers, those the safeguarding workers and those uh, working to make our churches safer places, God, as they serve, uh, we pray that the love that you have for them would continue to, 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 to keep them, Lord, as they serve the body of Jesus Christ. We ask these and other mercies in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. Dear Lord, we praise you because you are all knowing, yet still all living. We thank you for creating this beautiful world that sustains us in perfect harmony. And we thank you that you know us better than we know ourselves. So today we pray, uh, especially for all those involved in safeguarding policy writing. Give them wisdom in their words and the understanding to ensure policies are easy to follow and well formulated. We pray too for those who have to implement them and make difficult decisions. We pray wisdom and clarity to them. We pray you guard their hearts and protect them especially those here in difficult and sad situations. We pray especially for those working in the Home Office and other high profile cases. May they be guided by you, seek you and do their jobs with sincere hearts. Amen. And having prayed for ourselves and for the needs of those who are vulnerable, Let's also just remember now in a moment of silence those who we particularly know and care for who are vulnerable because of sickness or ill health or sorrow or bereavement. Asking God to protect and heal them. And now let's pray as our Saviour taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. The kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Faithful Lord, 
whose steadfast love never ceases and whose mercies never come to an end. Grant us the grace to trust you and to receive the gifts of your love new every morning. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As we finish, a reminder that our Renew Cafe uh, continues every Thursday morning from 9.30 until 12 noon. It's a chance to enjoy coffee and cake, uh, enjoy a chat, uh, and enjoy doing some craft or art work, whether you bring your own project uh, or whether you can pick up one of the variety of resources that are available there. Uh, everyone's welcome from across the community. It's a time and a place to really work, work on, uh, to rebuild our own well-being. A number of other things are going on in the life of the church at the moment. If you'd like to know more about those, you can contact me or you can sign up for things, discover more about things on our website, uh, the details of which are on the screen as well now. But as we finish, may God the Father, who has given to his Son the name above every name, strengthen you to know Christ and proclaim Christ as Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God 
and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Yeah.